This is part two of an overview of the new features and enhancements to the texture painting workflow in Mudbox 2010. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the addition of a dry brush. So a dry brush tool now exists in the paint tools tray to let you apply paint relative to the sculpted detail in your models. This tool is excellent for applying color to the raised area of a sculpted surface. So you can see here in this example I have some scales along the jawline of this character. and I'm going to use this off-white just to highlight or touch upon the top level of these scales. So I'm not affecting the cavis, cavities or crevices in between the scales, uh, just highlighting the upper level. I'm painting a kind of a higher res mesh here, about 2.7 million polys. And I'm going to take advantage of my mirroring tool here as well. As I paint, I'm actually mirroring across to the other side. So painting on the high res mesh, I'm able to take advantage of all the sculpted details. Of course, I can get the inverse of the effect. I'm going to grab this kind of dark off green here. And if I hold down my control key, I can effectively get the opposite result. So as you can see, as I paint along, I'm now affecting only the cavities and the crevices here. So I'm uh, essentially getting in between these scales as I go along and paint. So this is an excellent tool for applying some kind of weathered effects or additional highlights to your sculpted model. Mudbox also has the ability to display a low res mesh while displaying the normal map. This allows artists to take advantage of the high resolution details of their sculpt model. So here you can see I'm displaying my bump map as a normal map. Um, we have another new tool within Mudbox called the clone tool. The new clone brush lets you sample existing paint applied on one area of a model and project it onto another area of the same model. And you can see some of the skin details that we built using in uh, the Photoshop interoperability in the first part of the texture painting workflow here. And I'm able to go ahead and sample an area here and uh, clone that essentially with this target. And as you can see, I'm using mirroring with the clone tool as well to go ahead and take advantage of those effects on one part of the sculpt and put it on another part of the model here as well. In Mudbox, I can easily apply stencils to a variety of objects. So in this case here, I'm just going to jump to the image browser here within Mudbox, and I have a little texture directory of skin textures and things like that. And I have this nice little tattoo um, image here. So the nice thing about this, I'm just going to dump it in as a stencil, go back to my viewport, and you'll see that it's uh, an image here with an alpha map on it. So it has some nice transparency to it. And the great thing about this is I can essentially apply this as like a, a decal, like you would with a... Uh, like a model kit. So I'm just going to position it here over my character and you'll notice that as I'm positioning it here I'm actually positioning it over um, a number of objects here. So there's the character, a hat, and goggles and I'm just going to take my paintbrush and just go ahead and just start to transfer that image onto my model here. So you'll notice I'm actually painting over uh, multiple objects here. So I'm applying my stencil and I can just go ahead and actually kind of rub it or transfer it on to these different objects here and just kind of leave this tattoo effect. You'll notice I'm also using mirroring with that tool, of course, so I'm texture painting with mirror on. And I can get this nice effect really quickly painting across objects with ease. We also have the ability in Mudbox to unload um, texture tiles. So on, in this case here, these guys are on different UV tiles, and I can just use my arrows here and unload them so I don't affect them. And then of course I can go ahead and turn them all back on, and it'll warn you here if you want to have them all on or not. It's a good way to save video memory uh, to be able to turn off or unload um, texture tiles. And the last thing we want to take a look at here is continuing on with the exchange of data from Mudbox um, back and forth between Mudbox and external 3D apps. So here I'm just going to select all of my objects, the hat, the goggles, and my character's head here. And I want to go and export this using FBX. So under the, underneath my preferences window here, you'll see a bunch of different uh, selections here. So you can actually blend, uh, put blend shapes and morph targets out. You can go ahead and flatten all of your textures, flatten each image per channel as well, which is a nice handy feature. And let's just go to the uh, export selection here. So underneath the file menu here, I can go ahead and pull in the pull down menu I can grab FBX and we'd go ahead and export this out. And if we just jump over to Maya, you'll see here's my base model now and here are the texture maps and how we have them linked up. So you'll see that Maya brings them in per channel and actually drops down layered textures here to hook everything up. So we can see a couple of different textures layered over top. Uh, this is without obviously the flattened image selection uh, um, and the preferences for exporting. And this will happen for every channel, whether it be specular, diffuse, reflection, bump, etc. And uh, in the end, we have our base model here. 
um, with all of the associated texture maps from Mudbox into Maya utilizing the Autodesk FBX format. 